In this video, I'm gonna show you the systems to automate 99% of your content workflow so that you can put that on autopilot and everything that you need to manage the process from beginning to end, which covers planning, creation, editing, repurposing, posting, and analytics. And not only am I gonna show you visually the concepts and the things that you need to think about to assemble your automated content workflow, but I'm also going to show you the specific tools that I've implemented to help me implement it in my business so you can do the same in yours. Now, when I think about planning, I'm really thinking about event planning. This is what am I going to record? Is it a YouTube video? Is it a podcast? Is it a live show? And what do I need to do from beginning to end in order to facilitate that entire process? So when I'm doing event planning, I'm really also doing project management. I'm overseeing the entire event from beginning to end because there's lots of little things that are going to happen within that event that I need to track from a high level. So I'll get into tracking individual pieces of content, but we still want to manage the project, the team, everything related to that event at a high level. So all planning is gonna start with ideation. This is really where you're thinking about all the different ideas of what you might want to record. You're gonna talk about the merits of those ideas, what's the most feasible, what has the most likelihood of success. And then once you've filtered through those ideas, you're gonna go into planning. You're gonna pick a date for recording. Maybe you're creating thumbnails. Maybe you're creating a script. These are the different elements that are gonna go into the planning of the content. And then if you really wanna automate this process so that it's seamless from beginning to end, you're gonna to wanna to build out the cloud storage that is going to facilitate all of the video files or the images or the documents that will be created during this process. So I automatically create all the folders that I need in frame.io to work with my video editor. And then also all of the folders that I need in Google Drive for long-term storage, like where I can keep all the original assets and where I can keep all the final assets after everything is said and done. Because I don't typically keep them in frame.io because frame.io can get pretty expensive pretty quickly. And I really want a dedicated place where I can just store my content for the next 10 years. And I don't want to rely on a service like frame.io to make that happen. And so then at that point, it's very easy to move to the production, the recording of that content, and then editing that video down to the final asset, and then repurposing that video if it's an interview or something that you want to turn into clips for social media, and then finally distributing that content. And the final piece of that entire event planning process is really just to evaluate the performance of the content itself, and then maybe of the team or the processes, so that when you go into event planning the next time, all of that can come into to the ideation and just the general dynamics of everything that's involved in your content workflow so that you can improve it over time. So then how would we track this in Airtable, the system I use? So this is the events tab. This is really helping you plan events and execute events. It's like your project management for any type of content you're recording. It has an inbox for all brand new ideas. This is where you sort through any of the ideas that you had that you want to record. And then you've got your planning workflows for your YouTube videos or you're batching a bunch of videos or you're working with a client. You can create your own custom workflows. You can also create script templates so that anytime you have an event, that script template will be copied over and you can fill that out. And then you've got your production workflows. This is going to help you actually run the recording event. You got to record it, edit it, distribute it. And then of course you have easy access to your frame.io project, which is automatically created for you. And then the same goes for your Google Drive or some other kind of cloud storage. All of this is automatically created for you. It's linking to all of your assets and the script. So the next piece of your automated content workflow is going to be a CMS, something that can keep track of all of the information related to all of the video that is coming out of the recording event and also helping you maintain quality through guidelines when you're working with your team, whether that's a video editor or a copywriter or a designer. The content management system is holding together all the information, the ability to maintain quality, the status of everything, including the media, the images. It's also going to help you leverage tools like ChatGPT. It can take video transcriptions, convert them into a post, and then you can clean them up later. And then it's really helping you build out a storage database of all of this content, video, images, text, so that you can have that for long term. You can reuse it. You can refactor it, whatever you need to do with it, giving you the ability to tag things and search for it. And it's really complementing your video production workflow, helping facilitate communication, even when you're working with external tools like frame.io, helping maintain the status between all the different systems when you change something in frame, having that come back to your own system, when revisions are coming back, and making sure that everybody on the team, whether they're the project manager, or the copywriter, or the video editor, or somebody that needs to approve video, has the notifications that they need in order to make this a streamlined experience. And building out this content management system in Airtable works pretty well. Here's a quick overview of the content tab. This allows us to track each individual piece of content with a unique ID. We also get a thumbnail, and we have the description, what type of media it is, and the status, and the publish date. We also have access to video 
editor guidelines so your editor knows exactly how to edit that type of video. It works great when you bring on a new video editor. We also have direct access to frame.io so that you and your editor can go back and forth with updates and feedback on that video. You can type in the different comments and then you can make edits or suggestions right on the video. And you'll notice here that we also have the CID. So frame and Airtable are connected. And when you upload videos to frame, they will automatically sync back into Airtable when your video editor is submitting revisions. We also have a similar tab for artwork and we can see the thumbnails that are coming through for YouTube. We have a similar thing for copy. This is also integrated with ChatGPT. So it's taking the transcription and giving us a couple different options for descriptions. You can take those, modify them, make them your own. You also have access to that original transcript. And then we also have the same for titles. ChatGPT is giving us a few ideas for titles and then we can take that and tweak it and really make it our own. And we also have a view here that is really just broken down by person. So we can see all the videos that are assigned to Sven or Pam or Aaron. And if you're working with clients, we have a similar view. You can see all the clients you're working with and they can actually see this as well. You can give them a read only view where they can see all of the videos that are outstanding and when they are going to be published and the status. And they have access to frame.io as well. So they can click this and give you feedback to really streamline that workflow when you're working with clients. And then you also have a content database. This is just a place where you have all of your content. You can recycle it and you can also tag your content based off of different topics that you talk about. And then you also have the ability to search that content so you can pull up old content and reuse it, whether that's for you or for a client. The system is also fully integrated with team communication software like Slack or something else that you might use. So if you're over in the system and you assign a video editor, they are going to get a notification over in Slack that there is a new video to be edited. They're going to get two direct links. One of them is going to take them directly to frame where they can review the video, any feedback that you or somebody else on the team might have given them so that they can make changes and return that. And they're also going to get a link that takes them directly to all of the outstanding videos that they have previously been assigned and the due dates associated with those videos so they know in which order to work on those videos. Now in frame, when they are ready to upload a video, they can simply upload that video directly into frame. And then once that video is uploaded back in the system, the status will be automatically updated to review. And then you will get a message in Slack saying that video is ready for review. You can click directly back into frame and you'll be able to watch that video. You can provide more feedback if need be for further corrections. Or from here, you can go directly to the status market approved. And then in the system, you'll see that move to done. And then you'll see it fall off this view because it's no longer in progress and we don't need to track it here. And so that leads to the final piece of this process, which is just posting and developing different workflows so that when you post a YouTube video, maybe you're also doing a promotion on TikTok or Twitter, building out these workflows so that when you post something, you can also trigger other actions to take place. Maybe you also want to promote an event before it actually happens a few days before. And not only that, but you might also want to post content into various communities that you belong to, maybe a Facebook group or a school group or some other community that's not really a social media platform, but you want to be able to create complex workflows so that when a piece of content is done, you can say, hey, I want to do X, Y, and Z in this order on this day. And those really become action items that someone can see and check off when they're done. And then some teams might also want to handle auto posting, like they're using Hootsuite or Buffer or Social B or any of the million different platforms out there. I actually use Airshare. I can use Airtable to directly interface into Airshare. It's really like a Buffer or a Hootsuite for developers. So that gives me an advantage because I don't have to download all of that content from the CMS, the content management system, the videos, the copy, the artwork, download it all, and then upload it into a new system and then schedule that all back out again. Plus, I can also pull in the analytics into Airtable as well, and I can also then do reporting through Airtable. But these are the things that you're going to need to think about when you get to the distribution or posting of content online. But let's take a quick look at what that looks like if you are using Airtable and Airshare to manage the content and also post that content and get the analytics from social media. So when it comes to content distribution from the system, you can also define different workflows. So I have different workflows for vertical video or my weekly YouTube. I also define different workflows for things that are not necessarily social media channels like 
communities that I want to publish to. So from within the system, you can define those workflows so that when content is ready, you can make sure that the content is distributed to each of those channels and someone is able to track it and make sure it's done. And then those workflows actually create all the social media posts. I can separate them by the platform. I can look at all of the posts. This is literally all of the content that I'm going to be posting to social media. It's got the platform. It's got the publish date. And again, the advantage is I don't need to download this. I can just take it straight from Airtable and push it directly to social media through the platform Airshare using Airtable automations. And then I can also get the analytics for each of these posts directly from Airshare. So I can get the views and the dislikes and the share count and the play count, all of these different analytics directly into Airtable. And so that allows me to create interfaces and reports and dashboards so I can see at a high level all of the content that I have scheduled, what's ready, what's not ready. And I can build out different graphs. I can see all of the different channels that I'm going to be distributing content to. And then I can also see the views and the performance of that content. And because I have everything in one system, it really makes an efficient content workflow from planning all the way to analytics so then I can complete that cycle and get better every week. So there you go. As always, I hope you found this video valuable. And if you want to get your hands on a system just like this, make sure to check the link in the description below. I linked to a new program that I just released that will give you access to a program and Airtable database and all the zaps that you need to put something like this together. Click that link. Otherwise, make sure to check out the next video. I go in depth on how to build out a lean and mean content team so that you can remove yourself from the content creation process and you can focus on growing your business or maybe even spending some time with your family. Check out that video and I'll see you there.